For me, agriculture is a dream that I live every day. Since I was a child, I knew that I was going to study and that I was going to work, right? To be here, to see the plants grow, to see the workers doing their jobs well. Well, I like what I do, it is something I have done since I was a child, so it fascinates me, it fascinates me to do this. Here it is very good because here I learn, I used to work, I had worked in the orchard, I have cultivated. But first I worked with toxic poisons and here I am learning that it is better to work with biological poisons, the product comes out better. I see that the product comes out better and there is less illness for me. Clean agriculture seeks to generate products without pesticide residues, maintaining a high level of productivity. For this purpose, clean agriculture processes use organic pesticides with a lower concentration than their chemical counterparts and natural alternatives for pest control. We are located in the municipality of Medellin, San Cristobal, in the village of El Llano, in the upper part of the village, growing crops of earth, fruits and vegetables, San Cristobal is located between 1,800 and 2,000 meters above sea level, ideal conditions for the production of this type of vegetables, this land was formerly, let's say, used for dairy farming, what we did, let's say, was a soil enrichment open the land, form it into contour lines. These contour lines are very important to prevent erosion to gain greater carrying capacity of each of the varieties planted and in times of winter the contour lines are responsible, let's say, to isolate the water and prevent them from entering, let's say, above the threshing floor. The project has approximately 4.8 hectares, which are distributed by weekly, monthly and quarterly planting. Why this rotation? Because the needs of our target market require us to have fresh produce harvested in less than 12 hours a day. This project was born from the need to bring the final consumer a healthy, quality product at a low cost, we find a great variety of vegetables such as zucchini, broccoli, radish, cauliflower, lettuce, aromatic herbs such as rosemary, thyme, basil, among others. The main difficulty, as I mentioned before, was to establish an agricultural project in a completely new soil, new soil that was not directly associated with agriculture but with livestock, right? Because it was a soil that was totally compacted, which as we say colloquially was not loaded enough to get a good production of all these types of vegetables. Since broccoli does not absorb the same nutrients that a lettuce absorbs, right so for example fruit vegetables large leaf vegetables gave us a lot of difficulty since the land let's say had to be adapted to the model how did we solve these difficulties first by entering with quality raw materials fully composted organic material of good quality of good origin with its ICA registration fully completed, since in agriculture one often tends to use cheaper raw materials but that do not guarantee in the medium and long term that they will, let's say, to develop completely in the soil. The second thing, to enter with biostimulants also fixed from biotechnology, biostimulants that stimulate, root, that the soil, let's say a soil, a soil as we found this one, 
which is a sandy soil, right? The plant can, let's say, have the capacity to root sufficiently to obtain the nutrients that we are applying. The project is relatively new. At that moment we are at 46% of the productive capacity that this land can have. How do we get that percentage? By analyzing, let's say, on a monthly basis, taking a soil sample and seeing what capacity is being loaded with nutrients according to, let's say, all these inputs that we are applying and the capacity that certain vegetables have, let's say, to increase their weight week after week, for example, we started by producing lettuce of 200, 220 grams in 5 weeks. At this moment we are producing lettuce of 450 grams in the same weeks, right? That is a very good level for the market we are in, it may be that, let's say, 200-250 grams lettuce is optimal for another type of market, right? So it is also very important that these technical and financial returns are adaptable to the model that you are implementing. This model has a high degree of innovation. What innovation are we talking about? All the pest control is through agricultural biotechnology. What is agricultural biotechnology? Strains of efficient microorganisms, which help us to control pests, fungi and diseases that affect this type of vegetables or fruits and control them in a supremely efficient way, efficient in what? In time, in money, and we are saving, let's say, having to resort to applying large amounts of chemical inputs for pest control, which not only affect, let's say, the health of workers and consumers, but also in the short and medium term can make the project unsustainable. The first thing to know is that clean agriculture is considered a form of agricultural production that applies special procedures that seek to protect nature and its species. The habits or customs used in clean agriculture that care for the environment are those that reduce or eliminate the use of chemicals on crops and in animal husbandry, as well as those that take special care of the land before during and after harvesting, as well as those that protect the conservation of nature and pay greater attention to the welfare of workers. Since I was 12 years old, I have been working this for 40 years. This is what I have lived from, working the land, yes, a family inheritance, my father left me this as an inheritance. Well, here it is very good because here I learned, I used to work, I had worked the orchard, the cultivated land, but first I worked with toxic poisons and here I am learning that it is better to work with biological poisons, the product comes out better. Then I see that the product comes out better and less sickness for one. Because the toxic poison makes you sick even when fumigating. Even to fumigate it makes you sick. It gives you a headache, on the other hand this product that we have. Fumigated with this, well with this product, which I see is good, you don't get sick, you don't even need to put on gloves and the product is cleaner. It is easy to adapt to working with, well, with this and the same with the Teleriato. We work with a level curve. We work in a different way. It was downwards, but, we have always worked here in San Cristobal, but we always plant downwards and I see that it is better this way and I am learning that it is better this way. And in so many years that I have been working this and I am liking the way of working this way. Well, because in the curves every time it fits a little more of other plants, it fits more plants and also for the water, the soil runs downwards less and better. Well, my name is Flora Chaveri and I have been working here since June. 
I like what I do. It is something I have done since I was a child. So it fascinates me. With vegetables, with flowers, with whatever. All my life, since I was 13, 14 years old. Well, all my life. Well, I have lived here. My nephew came here first and I also came here to work because of him. No, well, I don't have anything special, I like everything. My workday here is from 6 a.m. to 3.30, the normal. And yes, obviously there is a lot of work to reorganize. We do extra work until obviously we finish and no. My normal day here is to check each crop. To look at the vegetables. To see that they have the right size. And yes, that is the basics. Yes, here practically, my two nephews and my sister work here, she collects the produce. And I also work overtime here in the afternoon when I get off work, which is at half past three, I also work overtime here. I also fix the vegetables, right now we are planting cauliflower at a distance of 40 centimeters, well, here everything has its measure. Because each product has its distance so that it comes out better, the product comes out better. For example, beet has a distance of 20 centimeters. Arugula, cilantro has another distance, each vegetable has its own measure. Well no. Here we can sow around 1,000, 2,000, 2,200 bushes that we have to sow. The planting here is every day. Here we plant, but here, for example, we plant every week and here we take three days planting. Sometimes three days, more, three days planting, because we have to prepare the soil, fertilize it. Yes, my nephew goes behind me sowing. I take the measure and there he comes from behind sewing. Taking care of the soil is extremely important. Let's say, this is a technology, let's say, that dates back some 60 years, right, which is, let's say, sowing the crops under a determined sowing distance and in soil, right, in a fertile soil. Secondly, the final consumer, be it large supermarkets, homes, supermarkets and others, always want a fresh product, right? So, this rotation gives us the ability to supply the target market with product harvested in less than 12 hours, so that the customer feels that he is really with a product harvested with a short duration, which is going to arrive, let's say, with all its nutritional and physical qualities to his table. Avoiding the use of agrochemicals avoids the loss of beneficial species, the development of resistance by pests and the possibility of bioaccumulation of harmful substances that reach the final customer. One of the commercial advantages of this form of cultivation is the acceptance by the public of organic products that represent a lower risk to health. I think that the fear must exist. Because one should not make a change. So to speak abruptly, one must adopt these new technologies through deadlines, right? It is like an example, when you are used to having beans, 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 beans every day in your house and they change the menu, you are almost always going to get sick, right? Or you are going to feel, let's say, as something strange, the same is true for the soil, right? One must get used to the soil to new technologies, but gradually, so as not to create, let's say, a worse imbalance, because what you can end up doing is to create a worse imbalance, let's say, environmentally and economically, as those plants and that soil were accustomed, let's say, to certain technologies, 
to let's say being controlled with certain chemical products, what we are going to do is that we are going to lose a great part of our harvest, so the invitation is. This model is totally profitable, it is totally sustainable but it must be done. Gradually in time, not changing 360 degrees at once. It has brought about a resounding change because I was one who, in my knowledge, or as it was in my house, my father, in short, my brothers, were chemists with us. But this change seems to me to be very excellent, because it is something that is very good for humanity, because it does not have so many chemicals, it is natural, so for health, for all that. Yes, it is better to get a better product and it is better for human consumption, because it is a product that we can, that is, it does not contaminate, it does not cause diseases, that is why there is so much disease, and cancer and things like that, because of toxic poisons, that makes us sick, but these poisons do not. Finally, these good practices guarantee to all communities the welfare of consumers, optimal working conditions and a controlled way of handling pesticides. For these reasons it is important to highlight the work of the people who work in this crop. The knowledge of the labor force, that is, the specialization of that labor force, even if it is not qualified, but they have, let's say, ancestral knowledge, which, let's say, I have workers here between 40 and 50 years old that started working since they were 7 years old, with their father, is very important, given that they must, let's say, how to carry out the work with an important common sense, right? Here, let's say, in sowing, spraying, fertilization must be done with a certain degree of conscience, conscience in what? In that the parameters established by the project must be followed, that is, the quantities of inputs, the measures, the issue of nozzles, but when we find ourselves with this type of models, we sometimes find ourselves with a barrier, which is that most of our farmers only know conventional agriculture. So when they are faced with the fact that they no longer have to apply, let's say, a fungicide, an insecticide, to eradicate the problem that the crop has, for them it is often a limiting factor. What we have done from the project is, let's say, as a school, right? To generate in them knowledge of biotechnology, to explain to them which strains of microorganisms we are handling, which strain controls us, which strain is incompatible with which product, how the mixture should be made, because the importance and sustainability of this model over time is that the products and the doses tend to decrease, because the microorganisms really establish in the crop. If you do not apply a chemical input, which is what we were talking about now, how do people change? Then, for example, projects that are used to manage it in a conventional way and see a type of program like this or read about it or are consulted by a salesman that sells biological products and change when they do not see the result, that is, the immediate result, what they do is to apply a chemical and then they are doing worse damage. Because they are eliminating the microorganism that you are applying and the chemical will no longer work in the best way. In the long term we see ourselves really generating an industry, an industry around how things should be done well in agriculture, how a well-established crop should be cultivated with very well-measured processes, because measurement in this type of projects is extremely important, not only economically but also environmentally and technically we have to see if we are doing things well, then, let us say, if we continue cultivating and improving this type of processes, not only here, but if we replicate this over time in more projects, we can really generate totally sustainable companies in the Colombian agriculture.
I invite people to work the land better, to work the land, those of us who like to work the land, it is better to work it with organic products, it is better and the product comes out good, the same, it comes out the same and the product tastes better, it tastes better. For example, you take the beet and peel it raw, we have made it here and it comes out delicious, it comes out sweet, rich and you can just peel it, but with toxic poison, who does that? You can't, you have to wash it well, you have to wash it, you have to organize it well because it is scary to eat it like that. It is better for your health. A thousand times, of course it is. I invite you to that, for example, to eat a lot of spinach. A lot of spinach, yes. All the crops, that are clean. I invite you to that, to eat them, they are excellent quality. For me, agriculture is a dream that I live every day. Since I was a child I knew that I was going to study and work, right? To be here. To see the plants grow, to see the workers how well they carry out their work. To see a project that has been formed from something small and that is already transforming let's say, into an industry where, let's say, many things that were always in the projects are being converted from one side to another, like I buy the inputs here, I buy the seedlings here, I produce here and sell to another, right? Which is, let's say, different from this model, here everything is united, right? Everything here is linked, right? Transversally, from production to commercialization, it is totally linked. This work is gratifying, previously I was always linked to field processes, consulting issues, government projects. And now let's say that I have the opportunity to generate my own projects. It is, let's say, one of the best things that could have happened to me. Agriculture gives us, let's say, the opportunity to generate life and raise awareness and serve the people, serve them how? By providing them with a quality product, an economic product that someone, in order to eat well, does not have to take a large amount of money out of his pocket, so that, let's say, food supermassivity is really a right for everyone. That is, let's say, what leads me every day to be more motivated and to generate, let's say, ideal conditions for it to have a duration that, God willing, will last forever. And it is a job that is very little valued because, let's see, people look, more than anything else, at the jobs that are companies and all this. But the work of the farmer is not valued as such, that this is a job that, well, many people do not value it but, well, all of us live from this, from the field. Because if it were not for the field or for the farmers, well, obviously food comes from the field. So that is the invitation that I make to you. No, well, as I said, I don't have anything special, I like everything. There is nothing like the countryside, I am fascinated by the countryside, I was raised in the countryside and I am fascinated by it and we all work in it. <laughs>